Hi folks, what follows is a video of some sparring that we did a week or so back in, in my class, or after my class rather, um, of spear versus sword with a buckler or sword with a shield, and finishing off with a couple of bouts of spear and shield versus long sword, uh, and then in fact uh, sabre. Um, and there are a few things to note. First of all, the people in that video are pretty much new to these sort of uh, opposing weapons, uh, so go easy on them, especially they're pretty much new to the shield. Some of those guys have never used a shield uh, in any kind of sparring before, and those that have used a shield before in sparring have only used it a handful of times. So they are not experienced spear people, um, shield people. You will notice that they make a few um, elementary errors in using the shield. Some of my guys have experience with sword and buckler. When we're um, fighting with sword and buckler, the buckler is held out. However, of course, as Roland Vorchecker has uh, famously pointed out, holding out this big, um, flat Viking-type shield at arm's length. You might do it occasionally for specific purposes, but having it as your default position is, is rather silly because it collapses a bit too easily if you just hold it face on. Uh, and of course, if you hold it out at arm's length, your arm gets very tired very quickly as well. Um, so that's the first thing to say is that a number of them hold the shield out as if it were a buckler, which of course is not how it should be held, generally speaking. The other thing you'll notice is that very often when legs are being targeted, and legs are a major target against a shield holder, um, which is, you know, which is fine, but a lot of the people carrying the shield are constantly dipping the shield down to try and defend the legs. Of course, you shouldn't really, generally speaking, do this either, because if, a, if you're fighting someone and you notice that they're always dipping the shield down, then they're absolutely ripe for a feint. All you have to do is a feint low and then hit high. So they're constantly exposing their vital targets up here. Instead, they should move the, move the leg back or use the weapon to defend the leg if, if you can't move backwards. Um, so the shield should be kept really in pretty much in the high lines and should be kept protecting mostly the outside line and very occasionally switching it to the inside line. It shouldn't generally be held face on. Uh, and finally, the other um, thing that you'll notice an error in the way that the shield is held, a few people do this, which is of course, <laughs> they have made a wonderful ramp there, especially against a spear. And uh, you'll notice in the bout that, that I'm only in one of the bouts, um, but my opponent did, does this, and uh, it's just a lovely opportunity to skim that spear straight up the shield, straight into the person's face. So do not hold a shield like this, um, unless you're doing it as some kind of you know, ruse, as a way of uh, trying to um, lure someone into thrusting up here. But you need to be pretty quick if you're using that as a ruse, because what you'll find is even if you're intending to do something like this and think, okay, then they'll thrust into the shield and I'll switch it to the outside, um, you'll often find that you'll get hit in the face before you get the chance to do something like that. The spear is incredibly quick uh, used two-handed. You'll notice when it's used one-handed it is not so quick. Um, obviously the spear pretty much always has a reach advantage um, and therefore the swordsman's job really is to try and close down the uh, spearman and try and close distance. However, you will notice that uh, very often the swordsman manages to hit the lead hand of the spearman and this is a vulnerability of spearmen. Finally, I will say when you're watching these videos, we generally, uh, when a person gets hit, they try and do an afterblow, in other words they try and hit the opponent back or see if they can and then they stop. That's what we term an exchange. And most of the time, not all of the time, but most of the time my guys will indicate where they were hit. Okay, so generally speaking, if they were hitting a sword arm, they'll hold the sword hand or sword arm up. Uh, and if they were hit somewhere else in their body, they'll usually tap to show the other person where they managed to hit them. Uh, and then there'll be a brief break, they'll come apart, and then they'll go again. Um, good. Okay, guys, I hope it's clear what's going on in this, this video. I've compiled lots of fights together. I haven't edited them too heavily, so it's quite a long video, I know. Uh, but there we go. Hopefully it'll be interesting to some of you. Cheers, guys.
Good. Good clear indications of where you hit. Remember, only thrusts with the spear count. Okay, two more hits. Remember to clearly indicate hits.
Okay, three more. <laughs> One more. <laughs> Cool. Okay, two more. Cool, well done guys. Okay, three more.
spur and shield is after this. Nice. Okay, three more. One more. Good. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Okay, two more hits. Thank <laughs> you. 
three more. One more. Cool. Well done, guys.